daily discussions with the church on briefing allowed us to ask very simple questions and to record the requirements of the church in simple diagrams which we've translated into the building. The church required a high altar, a position for the bishop, the cathedra, and an arrangement whereby the priests on the sanctuary and the people in the nave could be seen to be participating in the Mass. This cathedral is nearly new. It was consecrated in June last year and it serves the Diocese of Clifton, which covers Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, Somerset and Avon, and the county of Bristol itself. And it's a very modern building. Now just for the sake of being different, but modern for a very good reason. When the architect started work on this building, he was given a very clear basic brief that the font and the altar were to be much closer to the people than usual. There was to be nothing remote about this building. The font has been put next to the entrance of the church because baptism introduces a person to the Christian life. And this stoop of holy water here reminds him of his baptism every time he comes into the building. Baptism, of course, is a public rather than a private affair. So the font is right alongside the congregation here and in full view of the altar, whereas in a lot of medieval churches and cathedrals, the baptistry was right at the back of the church, out of sight. In fact, in a number of continental cathedrals, it's outside the building altogether in a separate baptistry. Now, as to the position of the altar, what the architect was asked to avoid was a long, narrow building with the altar at one end and the congregation at the other and about 50 yards of choir and choir stalls in between. So he was asked to base his designs on the phrase, God in our midst. And what we've got is a six-sided cathedral with a central altar and everybody gathered round it, congregation, choir, and clergy. In fact, there are about five or 600 people here this morning and not one of them is further away from the altar than the length of a cricket pitch. Work started in March 1970 to build the new cathedral. It was to accommodate a thousand people and cost only 600,000 pounds. It had to be both parish church and cathedral. It had to last at least 300 years. It also had to meet the requirements of new forms of worship laid down by the Second Vatican Council. It has a very uncompromising modern exterior but really you have to come inside because the building is built inside out and this is the inside. The interior surface of the concrete is beautifully etched as it were by the timber boards. Does anybody know the building was actually built in timber because the formwork which was used to form the concrete uh, was specially imported timber and there was a 12 men outside in the carpenter shop day by day and then there was one parishioner who was actually a parishioner working who mixed every bag of sand and, sand and cement every load of was all done by hand by him at the back of the machine for three years can you imagine it mixing concrete for three years but it had to be exactly to the right specification when the shuttering was removed from the nave and the hexagonal apertures and its star beam were revealed. This gave it a majesty, I would say. I wouldn't say uh, a church form, but it did give it a character. There was a different attitude by the men on site as the building progressed. There wasn't quite so much uh, shouting and the swearing was cut down by half, and uh, especially when the bishop came round. If the bishop was round, they said, the bishop's on site. Watch your swearing, lads. Looking back on the cathedral, well, it's still like, how can I say, I suppose it's like uh, visiting a friend. You know, you pop in there and walk around and remember friends, and it, it really is something to me. It's got its own character, and there'll be nobody coming back on this in two or three hundred years' time, putting things right, because this is it, this is it for, to stay forevermore. There'll be no restoration funds for this in two or three hundred years' time.
material is a, is a new media, really, called fair clay. It's concrete, but it doesn't fall to the ground like a lot of jelly when you, when you mix it up, you see. But the only thing about it is that when you put it in a mould, it's wet, and you've only got about an hour and a half to, to work on it. So you have to be very quick. And the image you have in your mind has to be quite clear. You've got to remember that a lot of these stations, in fact, are, are new as far as the general idea of the stations are, of course, are concerned. So they're upset about that to begin with. Then probably the media is a bit hairy, but then so was the experience. I did the charcoal sketches when I went back. They were simply charcoal sketches on small panels. Because char charcoal is good to work with, you can rub it in, it's quick. And um, you get the idea out of the head. And uh, I took them back, and uh, we had the meeting in Brissigan, and the whole bish sat at the top, and all the rest. And all the rest, he said, well, uh, my son, these um, sort of are very interesting. He said, they will be controversial, but they are very interesting. His Holiness has, has sort of signed them off and said, great, OK. And when he came back, I, I, when he said, OK, I thought, oh, well, I, you can actually get on with the actual thing. I scooped him up, I was heading for the door, when the bishop said, one moment, my son. So you skid to a halt, and they come and said, um, a bishop, and he said, now that we've approved these cards like this, how can we be sure that that is what we're going to get in actual fact? Oh, it was like standing at the crease at Lord's with the bat when you were about to hit a six. And I said, you've got to have faith, sir. They never said a word to me after that. <laughs> I just, I went, I never saw, I never saw any of them again. <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Because I didn't have long, two and a half hours, in which to get the idea around. So, uh, and then I'd start work on it. But it wasn't a question of, um, the main thing was to keep the image you wanted in your brain. This was the big problem. And I don't have the kind of brain that retains very much, very long. And so it, 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 it had to be down there in a couple of hours, because otherwise my mind would tell me, oh, you don't want to put the hand like that. Do it another way, and I'd do it again. And I, I didn't have time for that. So it was getting a clear image, and the clearer the image, the better it is. The pro-cathedral for the diocese for 123 years, the parish church in Park Place, Clifton. Now its wooden pillars are crumbling, and it begins to sink in everything but affectionate esteem. It's a church which has a lot of um, personal memories for most people, and I don't think it will ever be replaced. And that's why I'm very glad that the new cathedral is so vastly different, because we just won't compare them. Well, it's had a, um, an atmosphere which has been very useful at times. Uh, Physically, it's not the most attractive buildings. That isn't um, necessary, of course, but it's, uh, it's, it's a slight point against it. Well, I think it captures the spirit of a church a lot more than the new one will. But, uh, you know, to me, a church is a church. I feel that the place is not so important as the people, it's the people that make the church. Oh, I was almost awestruck by what I think is the most luminous and marvellous interior. Uh, and I, I was overwhelmed and uh, still am as the cathedral's filled with parish and family memories. I think it's, it's a marvellous place and as a building, outstanding. I like the, the light when it's half empty in May or June on a summer's day, um, which adds to its function, adds to its purpose, perhaps it induces the opportunity to pray, but just to be comfortable in this marvellous building. I, I, th I think the, the whole design, the, the um, somewhat uh, interesting re inverted pyramids, which have caused some conversation over the years, uh, 
the, 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 the colour of the seating, the carpet, the whole. It's a marvellous uh, place for ceremonies, but also more domestic and parish mass, parish ceremonies and family. Many of us will have great family memories of this marvellous building, and I certainly have. I think you've got to get a balance between, this is people's parish church where they come to each Sunday, it's the place that's their spiritual home, but then also it's the place for the diocese where hundreds of people look to find their home as well as the mother church for Clifton. It's like every building, it has its, its ups and downs, it's, normally it's very good. Um, I think the leaks have been the worst thing, but we're getting over that, so it's a lovely building. Every time I walk into it, I feel very privileged to be here, and every time I walk out on a Sunday and look at the people there, I feel privileged to be part of their story for as long as I'm here. And let it be a place where they can celebrate, but also a place where they can find peace, and a place where they can encounter God.